So, um, we said we saw this also in other political signs. For example, we said that the increase of um, uh, global warming and other ecological factors are forcing governments to take extreme measures, you know, not only extreme measures, but as we will see in a moment, causing them to champion uh, internationalization of governance, that is to say, a centralization of world government. We'll see it in a minute. Um, it's becoming very destructive to be. Anyway, but let's go on. Uh, economic consequences of the above, that is to say, global warming will lead to uh, uh, the fall of the economy in many, many countries. And uh, uh, it will also, we saw also how this led to the, to the demise of communism. Communism died essentially because the economy of the Soviet Union failed and it could no longer sustain uh, its, its uh, politics, not only over its own country, but also over the other countries of Eastern Europe. Uh, so, and capitalism also is tottering. So the issue is what kind of system are we going to now adopt? And all this is leading to all, all kinds of measure, uh, problems of security, uh, not only Islamic extremism, but also the issue of nu nuclear proliferation. Uh, the Soviet Union is, is talking about developing weapons that the West cannot stop. Uh, and all these things are going to force the world to come to, to, together and say, look, it's better for us to have a centralized government that will rule us, all right? Uh, other things, what we call the intractable Palestinian problem in the Middle East, uh, where because uh, the Jews were absent from their land for, for 2,000 years, Arabs moved in and occupied the space. And because they've been living there for hundreds and hundreds, years, they, as far as they're concerned, that is their land. And now that the Jews have returned to their homeland, uh, the Palestinians are fighting it, the Arabs are fighting it. Uh, and uh, particularly on the issue of Jerusalem, there seems to be no solution uh, at this moment. All this will lead to uh, somebody coming up one day to say, I have a solution. And the world will say, well, now if you can solve these problems for us, you better rule over us. Um, all right, so um, recently, uh, a former British Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, advocated publicly that it appears that what the world needs now is a centralized government. As a matter of fact, uh, it's not just that Judge Brown, uh, Gordon Brown uh, has mentioned this. Right from the end of the Second World War with the formation of the United Nations uh, around 1947, uh, this has been the trend. The idea is that with the formation of the United Nations, then the world will have a government that uh, will speak for the whole world. That was the whole point of the Security Council, that when the Security Council takes a, a stand on an issue, then that becomes the view of the whole world. Of course, it has not worked yet uh, on many of issues of the important issues but what we are saying is that all these are preparing the world for the acceptance of a centralized world government the idea is that without centralized control it would be impossible for meaningful solutions to be found to these important problems that is how people will explain it the antichrist government is the most extreme form of centralized administration. The Antichrist will come and he will, he will uh, take over the whole world. We'll see it uh, when we get to the reign of the Antichrist. He will take over the whole world 
and rule it centrally. Now, as a result, because Christians know it, they are very politically ad adverse to globalization. Anything that will bring the world together, anything that will promote centralizes, tr centralization in governance, in economy, in policies, many Christians oppose it politically. So they will join political parties that will say no to such practices and will oppose political parties that will uh, promote such practices. Now, in America, particularly at this time, it has become a major issue. Uh, most evangelical Christians, particularly the white ones, will support Donald Trump on the grounds that his policies uh, are against globalization and centralization, and therefore uh, very likely to uh, put away the chances or reduce the chances of the emergence of an antichrist. What should be clear to us include the following. The appearing of the antichrist is prophesied in the Bible and therefore cannot be stopped. That's the first point. This thing is prophesied in scriptures. So working to stop it it's, it's not possible. You'll be kicking against the good. You'll be, you'll be trying to solve a problem that is insoluble. In other words, we cannot, by political means, delay the coming of the Antichrist. All right? Uh, what we have been commissioned to do is not politics. We have not been commissioned to go and stop the move for centralization or globalization. Uh, or for that matter, to fight against uh, those who are championing the cause of global warming uh, and so on and so forth. That's not our calling. What's our calling? Our calling is to preach the, go the gospel of the kingdom, to say that a king is coming to take over the world and rule the planet Earth. That's our calling. That's what we have been asked to do. And that's what uh, we have to do. That is our own politics. The Christian's politics is to preach the coming of a king to rule the world. The appearing of the Antichrist is necessary in order for Jesus to return. Can I say that again? The appearing of the Antichrist is necessary in order for Christ, for Jesus to return. In other words, if the Antichrist does not come, then Jesus will not return. If we begin to fight, if, if the focus of our activity as Christians, as a church, is to fight against the appearing of the Antichrist by political means, that will, first of all, take us away from it. We take manpower, it will take resources away from the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, which is what we are being asked to preach. And then secondly, it will... Uh, even if he succeeds in delaying the, the appearing of the Antichrist, so delaying the return of Jesus, and we want Jesus to return quickly. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1 says, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsafe. alarmed by the teaching from us, whether by a prophet or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come in any way. Now listen to this. They will not until the rebellion of cause and the man of lawlessness is revealed, man doomed to destruction. Can I read that verse? Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day, what day? The day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, will not come until the rebellion occurs, that's number one, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man that is doomed 
to destruction. So the Lord's coming is not going to happen until after the man of lawlessness, which is the Antichrist, is revealed. So what are we saying? We are saying that Christians should not bother themselves, should not waste our time fighting against the appearing of the Antichrist by political means. Taking political sides, the basis of the fact that we are trying to delay the coming of the Antichrist. The coming of the Antichrist will happen willy-nilly because it's been prophesied. But secondly, the Lord needs to come. We need the Lord to come. And the Lord will not come until the Antichrist is revealed. So we want the Antichrist to be revealed quickly so that the Lord will come. Meanwhile, our responsibility is to preach the gospel of the kingdom. That is our task. In fact, if we have any political responsibility at all as believers, it is to preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. One reason the Antichrist pre precedes the return of Jesus is that he will set up a centralized government. The Antichrist will set up a centralized government. We have already seen that. But Jesus will also run a centralized government. Therefore, the Antichrist is, is the one that's going to set, prepare the ground by setting up this centralized system so that when Jesus comes to begin to operate it, the same centralized system, it will not be opposed because it has already been experienced under the Antichrist. Can I make myself clear? The Antichrist will be preparing the ground for the coming of Jesus by running a centralized system of government because that is exactly the same system that Jesus will run. From Jerusalem, he will rule the whole world. And that is exactly what the Antichrist would have already established. So it will not be difficult for Jesus to step into that uh, situation and operate the same kind of system. So in my thinking, we will not be applying our minds to wisdom if we are opposing what is already prophesied and what will facilitate the return of Jesus and the setting up of his administration. So how is the world preparing for the coming of the, of the Antichrist? It is preparing by these social means that we mentioned earlier on. The world is becoming self-centered uh, and that's promoting anarchy. And then we saw also that it's preparing through what is happening uh, in the environment, global warming, uh, and how it's going to impact on the economy and how the world is going to respond to that with a seeking to centralize its administration. We saw also that other issues such as the Middle East crisis, particularly the intractable Palestinian issue regarding Jerusalem, uh, will enhance the call for someone who can solve this intractable government, I mean problem uh, for the world. Uh, these are all ways in which the world is preparing for the coming of the Antichrist. And I'm saying that our response to that should not be to, to move towards uh, the kind of politics which promotes uh, uh, um, right-wing views necessarily. Uh, I call them right-wing very advisedly. Uh, but the real issue is that they are against global warming, uh, uh, sorry, they are against globalization uh, and anything that will bring centralization of administration. And we are saying that's not our concern. Our concern is to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And in any case, this centralized system will play into the hands of Jesus when he arrives. All right, so, so we are clearly at a point where the world is preparing itself for the emergence of the Antichrist, whose coming is necessary for the return of Jesus. 
the coming of Jesus is linked directly to the manifestation of the Antichrist from that passage we saw in Thessalonians. All right. So, I don't know whether we still have some time or whether we should stop here and then take on questions. David, what do you say? Hello, David. Well, sir, it's, uh, it's a wonderful teaching, uh, but I think if anybody has a question, you could ask now for clarity before we progress. There is, uh, there is, you call it emoji, for lifting up your hand. If you just uh, touch it, we will see it on the screen and then we will mute you to speak. If you are just waving your hand this way, we may not see you. But if you click that emoji that looks like a hand, we will see you. And then we will mute you to speak. Is there any question or clarification? Ma'am Jamal is on the screen. We want to hear you. Do you have any question? <laughs> yes. I am very um, amazed at um, the third point that he was raising about the Antichrist um, be, uh, preceding the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and he will set up a centralized government and uh, then he says that uh, it will be easy for Jesus when he comes because the ground will already be set you know by the Antichrist in running the centralized government so for me it is a, a very amazing observation of how God can use even an opposed force to bring to himself glory. Amen. I'm not asking a question, I'm just making an observation Amen. because I am linking it to the time when Jesus was being crucified. You know, the devil thought that that he, it was until he had done away with Jesus. But the Bible says that had he known mm -hmm. what he was doing, he okay. would not have let Jesus to be crucified. That's and right. in the same way now, if, if he had known, he would not set up this centralized government, but is doing it for the glory of our God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Jama. Um, Dr. Malia, you had asked a question earlier about grace. Uh, were you satisfied? Did it touch the dimensions you, you wanted clarity on? A bit of clarity. Actually, my, my message was not about grace and sins. It was a, about grace infusing strength and ability to overcome um, torture and, and the rest of the stuff which is coming. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Well, that's, that's obviously true. Um, grace is... Um, a free gift from God, undeserved favor from God towards us. And uh, viewed from the angle from which you are looking at it, you are quite right. Uh, we need strength from God because the, um, although, as we will see later, from my perspective, the, um, the, the real persecution and torture uh, will be avoided uh, by those who, by the grace of God, are raptured. Uh, but those who are left behind after the rapture will need a lot of grace because, uh, as we have seen, for example, 
if you refuse to take the mark of the beast, you cannot buy or sell. And uh, if you can imagine what life will be for a person who can neither buy nor sell, uh, then you will know that you will need grace uh, to be able to survive, you know. But that's really what, um, what we see from Jesus. The scripture says that uh, because mm -hmm. of the joy set before, he endured the cross. You know, uh, the joy set before Jesus is the same joy set before us. You know, uh, the Lord is offering us crowns. He's offering us thrones. He's offering us authority to rule. Uh, uh, and that's the wonderful thing we are anticipating uh, in the life. We'll see more about this uh, to proceed. Thank you very much. That is thank a very you. good question. Uh, thank you so much, sir. John, you like to say something? That's right. Okay, got some things to talk about. <laughs> right. The virus has now gone to about 120 strains. So if you take a vaccine for the virus, what are you getting vaccinated for? Okay. Um, in the United States, at this moment in time, um, the, the movement that is rioting on the streets is ongoing. It's not being covered by the news media, okay? The agenda of Black Lives Matter is totally communist. And the agenda is to bring down Trump so that they can strip the USA of her independence. She is the one country that still stands against their agenda, the New World Order agenda. And if you know anything about the New World Order agenda, it started with Cecil Rhodes. And it's been ongoing a long time. Okay? The UN, let me just read you something, if I can get it up. Whoa, dude. Okay. The United Nations, as conceived by the Council on Foreign Relations and funded by the House of Rockefeller, was never meant to be an academic debating society. It was conceived to be an international regime that would control the world's weapons, wars, courts, tax collectors, and economy. Yep. The orders to create this new international organization came from the Rockefellers. Yes. And it has the World Bank and the IMF as partners in all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're, it's not, Trump actually refused to sign the, the Charter on Global Warming. He refused it. He yes. said, this is ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. That's why he's yeah. reaping the whirlwind. He broke the, the um, trading charter with China that went through, I think, Bush. Was it Bush? One of the presidents, Clinton, pushed it through. He broke Bush, it. George yeah. Bush. Trump is the one thing that is keeping the states from anarchy, complete anarchy. Okay. All right. And it's not, it's not um, authoritarianism, whatever that word is. It's not. He's sending the federal troops in to protect the buildings. Otherwise, there will be a lot more places like Minneapolis that have burnt, allowed these protesters to burn down and then gone to the government and said, please, can you give us so many millions to rebuild? To which Trump said no, and rightly so. Yes. They have yes. battered the police. They, have, they don't want any police control. You need to be very careful about the news 
because it is propaganda controlled. I'm not right. saying that Thank the you. Antichrist is not coming. Yes, he's not. He is coming. Yes, the son of lawlessness will be revealed. But our main, main job is to get as many lives and to get this billion soul harvest in. That's Amen. what we've got to. Uh, Thank you very much. I appreciate not, your comment. Not, and, not fear, but to work hard to get this, this harvest in. 